Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Well, it's a couple of days after Christmas and I have recovered almost. But family dinners are the best. And we had a great family dinner. Italian as my nephew uh, is part Italian, I'm not Italian, or neither is my sister, but... <laughs> so every Christmas we've had Italian to their house. The best spaghetti and meatballs in the world made the Italian way. And my uh, uh, Tano's wife and my sister Linda, they've learned to make it from, well, Linda's mother-in-law and Tano, uh, Tano's grandfather and grandmother, they learned to make spaghetti the Sicilian way. And oh, there's nothing better. So, what a great time we had. Uh, we had drive, oh, 40 or 50 miles. And my 17-year-old grandson drove us there. Ooh, well, it isn't the first time. And he's been driving. Uh, he wants to drive everybody everywhere uh, ever since he's turned 16. <laughs> so uh, I trust his mother and dad's judgment. And this time he was driving his father's beautiful red Chrysler. Oh. And it brought back memories of when I hoped to inherit my father's brand new year old Cadillac hardtop, gold Cadillac, mind you, hardtop convertible. And he wrecked it. And I was his caretaker. That was going to be my pay. The only time that I will ever, ever, I am sure, have a chance to inherit and drive a hardtop Cadillac convertible. <laughs> Instead of that, I inherited that ratty old, little old, tinny uh, station wagon that Dad had almost wrecked. Uh, well, anyway, never mind that. Uh, <laughs> But we drove out in fine style, but it was sad because uh, my son-in-law ha had to fly to Denver because his father was very ill, uh, and so he was gathering with the family. And I don't know, that seemed to bring uh, a spirit to our Christmas dinner that hasn't really been there before. Uh, Tano's sister, Rissy, also part Italian, <laughs> was there from San Francisco with her husband and two children, both part Italian. And guess what? Even Linda's ex-husband, who now lives with his son, he was there. So he could pass judgment on the Italian cooking I talked to him a little while because I knew him back when, when, before they were ever married. And uh, I was this handsome Italian from Lawrence, Mass, out in Los Angeles where we happened to run into him. So we have people from all over the country. Tano's son flew in from New York. He's been going to the university back there, uh, uh, the military university. So uh, he is getting a chance now to become a, na a pilot, a pilot, and he's going to take his training. So he flew in from New York. They uh, drove in from San Francisco and, well, we just had a wonderful time. My other grandson, who is an accountant, he uh, is also lives in Chandler, so he was there, and I really, 
really, I don't think we've ever had a better time. Mmm, it gets better and better as we get to know, uh, well, after all these years, we're finally getting to know each other. <laughs> so, we were uh, really having a great time. Uh, I came in the house, I said, oh, I don't remember that fireplace. And it turns out that my uh, nephew Tano had just put it in. <laughs> so no wonder I didn't remember it. As he uh, had to do some changes when he they made the add-on for his father so he could be looked after after he fell and broke his hip. Uh, now this could causes the family to really have to think about what to do with those old folks. They picked me up at the Westward Ho about 12.30, a little after 12.30, and we didn't get home till dark. And that was a pretty long time for me to party. Uh, I was, uh, but, in fact, I, uh, if uh, Rhonda's, my son-in-law had been there, he probably got us out of there a little sooner but this time the cousins were all having such a good time reminiscing about how we, the parents, we beat them and did all this, you know, bad stuff like. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they told a tale <laughs> about my sister Linda was also there from Utah. And, of course, uh, they could tell tales about how she... Uh, how she misbehaved as a mom and so anyway they were just having such a great time that they could hardly bring themselves to call a close and I thought oh there's nothing like family at Christmas time or is just nothing uh, yeah, it was such a good time a really great so, uh, well, in fact, I had to rest up all the next day because I'm not used to partying like that, you know, just right intensely that many hours. Just sort of, you know, called a halt to those kind of long-winded parties. And so, the next day, I was like, mmm. <laughs> But my oldest son uh, stayed in Dewey, Arizona, and he was going over to his daughter's. And my second son stayed in Utah. And I think he was going over to St. George to uh, see relatives over there. And then he's planning on coming to Los Angeles to work on a play that's coming up at the Lounge Theater this coming January. So I told him that I would send his uh, book after he got home. So, and anyway, I gave, uh, I finally said, well, let's bring out the books. So, uh, my niece, Rissy, had read the uh, book about the 19th wife of Brigham Young the classic that everybody should read who uh, thinks we should fight polygamy. They should read 19th Wife. So we passed that on over to uh, Tano's wife, Debbie, who hadn't read it. And then I gave them a, a Christian history that I thought looked really good and uh, Gaetano and Debbie and then uh, we discussed books that are horrible that you shouldn't give for Christmas well I did send uh, the book called 18 stories of Pl women who fled from polygamy which is uh, uh, possibly the worst book that you could ever give for Christmas, but the people you give it to really have to be tough and ready for the worst. And I sent it to my niece, Cheryl, and told her, please try to get your 
cousin Camille to read this too because she needs to read it too. And you know her mother would have sent it to her. So, because my sister, before she died, had 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 investigated uh, Colorado City quite extensively in her role as a public health nurse. So anyway, that was our and uh, we passed out the books uh, and I I gave uh, I told my nephew Jamal why I didn't give him crow killer because mountain man Johnston called Indians red coon and I said he didn't know that he didn't know it. but uh, I told him about it rather than give him the book so he would you know uh, you you should read the books you give your grandchildren at least so you know what's in them so there's not some horrible thing in them that you don't, surely wouldn't have given them if you'd known it was there. So anyway, we got the books distributed. Oh, and the great wonderful thing is my niece, Rissy, who reads extensively and has got a whole library closet, uh, a huge room full of books, I gave her Madame Blavatsky's name, Helena, the Russian aristocrat who formed the Theosophical Society, who knows a great deal about mental telepathy, clairvoyance, uh, all kinds of tricks, psychic, who, and so uh, she wrote down her name, and I said, be sure and get this book, and I'm giving it to Linda, your mom, because she needs to read this book. 500 pages of very, oh, amazing information that come from the Tibetan masters, um, all kinds of people uh, that you will not believe, you will not believe what they can do when they all get together. So, anyway, the books got passed out. And my grandson drove us home very well. Oh, he's getting to be a heck of a driver at 17. And that was Christmas for another great year.